So here's the parts I'll be using. I got all these from tbparts.com. At the top of it, it's got their V2 race head. Um, and I'll be putting a higher lift cam in there. There's a little look at it. It's got a little bigger valves. And it's got the roller rockers. Under that is the bigger bore cylinder. It's going to make it a 141 instead of a 125. There's the piston. And it comes with all the gaskets of hardware you need. Okay, so I'm going to be making some changes to the old ice bear today. Um, I'm going to be putting on a big bore kit, and that's going to go right here. It's going to replace the cylinder, the piston, and the head is going to be a um, high performance head. So, um, first step, you just got to uh, drain the oil. Um, I wasn't sure what engine this was exactly, and then someone said to look at this sticker here, and there it is there. And it says LF152 FMI. And apparently that is the, um, let's see if we can zoom in here. That's like the family of engines. So um, in order to do this work on it, I got this book here. It's a Haynes book and it's called Pit Bikes. And in there, there's a chapter on this engine. So for all like my torque specifications and stuff like that, there it is there. See, life and uh, that's it. So I think that's it. It seems to be the same thing as I was reading through it. So like I said, first step will be to change the oil and I'll show you where to do that. To drain the oil is real easy. It's just right under here, and it is this bolt here. You will see there's a bolt further underneath, back here. It's like on an angle. Don't take that bolt out. You take out the bolt that's straight, and it's a 17 millimeter. And uh, yeah, just take it out, let the oil out. All right, the oil is drained. Before I go any further, I just wanted to tell you what I had done to this bike and how uh, the results of what I had done. Um, when I first got it, uh, of course it was stock. I added the, uh, the carburetor, as you can see there. That's a VM, what is it? VM22 clone, Chinese copy off Amazon. And I put this exhaust on from Trail Buddy, Trail Buddy Thumper. And um, I think that was it. And uh, so I did those two things as like performance upgrades and it made a difference. And I'll put the video now as to what my before results were. Now keep in mind, I'm 290 pounds, six foot five. Um, so the bike is working a little harder with me on it. And also these tires are bigger tires as you know as you can see so they're not just the normal tires that come on here the ones that come on here are kind of puny and these are a little beefier so that little more rolling resistance there so take a look at this video you'll see the speeds that this thing did before I do any of this and then of course I'll do it an after as well Okay, this is on the 125, and going through the gears here, and we're going to see what it can do. There's a big hill coming up, so I try to get it into fourth gear and wide open throttle as fast as possible. There you see the, uh, it's about 47 miles an hour, 48, crossing this bridge, and around, sorry, 49. Now this is the start of the hill. As soon as you hit this hill, this is a pretty steep hill, and speed starts tapering off quick and uh, there's an intersection here and it's about 39 
37 miles an hour at the top of that little hill. And it levels off here for a second and it goes up another portion of the hill. Here it comes. This is a pretty steep hill as well. And at the top I look again. I can't see as I'm narrating this what the speed was. I think it was about 37. Now this is going downhill. This immediately goes downhill. And at the very bottom, which is right about here, I look, and I see 57. And I, I, that's about right for what this motorcycle was. turn here and then um, right as you start off here there's a little hill nothing that affects anything it's such a small hill video when I look down at that speedometer and then you can see the speedometer easier. <clears throat> I'm not going to read them off now when, when, I, when the camera looks at it because I can't, I can't see it. So. Okay, I'll just pause the video and you can see what it is. All right. Okay, now this is uh, turned around now. And then I'm on my way back. This is the return, the return trip. It's not quite as long, but just uh, you know, to get the speed each way, just so that you know that there wasn't a headwind going one way and a tailwind the other way, kind of averages out. So we'll just go back across the lake here, where it's nice and flat. So in fourth gear by this time, and wide open throttle. 125 would stay around 50 miles an hour. It was, uh, it was about the top. I check it at that bridge. So just remember that bridge when we do the, uh, the upgrades. Now this is a slight uphill now. Remember on the other way back it was, you know, of course, downhill. Uh, now we're going back up that hill. It's a very slight long hill, but you can see the 125 doesn't have the power to keep going up the hill because by the time we get up here to this uh, you'll see a road come in on the right I check the speed uh, right here right where the road widens I check the speed see what it is there I think it's about 45 because it's a slight uphill you know so I was doing 50 something going across the bridge and, uh, carburetors off now Took the carburetor off and the exhaust is also off. So now we can start getting to this thing, replacing this cylinder, and this is the head, and get started with that. Now it's on to removing the head. I removed the valve adjustment caps, top and bottom, took out the spark plug, and then there's this bolt here. This bolt removes this engine cover here. Well, it's a timing chain cover. Let's see. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do that now. This 
just like that. There we have the side cover removed off of, um, the, I guess it's the flywheel. Um, if you go to do this, you're not going to be able to remove that cover. So I just um, put some zip ties there because this wire here holds it. So rather than figure out where that wire goes and disconnect it and everything, it's not necessary to, to get rid of it. Um, so that's what I did, just wired it out of the way. Make yourself a little drawing as to where the bolts go like that on a piece of cardboard and pop them through. They're all different sizes. And not a bad idea to pick yourself up a new gasket for that because as you can see this one this one broke. Um, there's not it's not real oily in there. It's not like a it's not like the crankcase or anything but oil does get through there. So just to prevent leaks and stuff getting in there pick yourself up a new gasket. Then you put it to top dead center. The engine rotates counterclockwise. There's a little arrow there to tell you that that's the way it goes. And you will see on here, there is the letter T. Believe me, it's on there. And then the line. And that line mates up with that pointer. So you put the T in line with the line for the T on line with that pointer. And then you check your cam. And there's a little dot there. And that little dot matches up with a groove that's in the head it's behind this gasket that I'm not going to take off um, but that'll all line up if you line up this T like I'll, I'll rotate the engine once around here and line up the T again with the pointer and there you see the dot on the cam is is off it's not lining up with the, the dot so that just means you're off one turn so you just turn the crank around one more time to the T line it up and there the cam is back so that's how you do that. So you set the engine to top dead center. Next was to take the cam gear off and release the cam chain. So there's three bolts there. Take off your, uh, well, you take out the three bolts. Then you have to release the tension on the chain, which if we go underneath here, right there, that bolt that's the crooked bolt. Remember when we drained the oil, the one that was on an angle? Well, you take that bolt out and there's a big long spring behind it and that's what puts the tension on the cam chain here it is here sitting here there's the bolt long chain with this plunger thing and that's what puts the tension on the cam chain and uh, take those out now we take off the cylinder head four top bolts here the nuts for them and then there's one barrel screw and then the head will come off all right the cylinder head is off I had to remove or drop my fender down because my fender I had mounted up real high so uh, the cylinder head was hitting it when it was coming off so there's the cylinder head um, removed and now we're looking at the, the cylinder um, the way you get that off is there's a screw here you take that out and that's a there's a little wheel inside that the timing chain rolls over so you remove that and then down here further there's a another screw that holds the barrel to the crankcase so you remove that and then after that happens this will just pull straight off um, and, and there's that's what it looks like okay all right there's the cylinder removed so all that's left is the piston sticking out and then um, to remove that, there's a, a little piston pin. Let me go around the other side. A wrist pin clip. And what you'll do is just take a pair of needle nose, get that, and then you'll give it like a twist. And it'll, um, I can't do it with the camera, but it'll release the compression on it. You can pop this, the spring out and then get the wrist pin out and then the piston will come off. All right, I thought I would show you this. <clears throat> I was having trouble getting the piston or the wrist pin out. Um, so you don't want to you don't want to use a hammer and, and hammer this out, or, or like put a punch or anything and, and try to hammer it out because that's going to put a lot of sideways force on the connecting rod and the connecting rod bearing, and um, you don't want to do any damage. So that the wrist pin would not come out; it would just move a little bit left and right. But in order to get it out, what I did was 
um, I just put a, a little socket on this side of the wrist pin and then I put a big socket on the other side to kind of to catch the wrist pin and then I used the C-clamp and put the C-clamp on there pushed on the little socket and it, it just pushed it all the way through into the other socket now it's most of the way out I can grab it with pliers now and pull it the rest of the way out Bum, 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 bum. What do we have here? This is uh, my starter, and the fins are hitting the starter. So I'm going to have to give it a, a shave. Um, there was a nice write up on this. I forget where I was reading it. And um, the guy that wrote it probably is watching it right now. Um, but he did a real nice write up on this. So this is not a surprise for me. Um, he said he had to shave his and uh, I'll show you what the old one looks like and we'll compare the two. Here's the two cylinders sitting side by side. This is the, f the factory one and you can see they, how they clearance this out for the starter. And then the, this one has the fins that go all the way across. So I'm going to have to trim this off. I'll use a grinding wheel and then I'll cover all this stuff so the grit doesn't go in anywhere and then after I'm done cutting it I'll still wash it all out so uh, the grit won't be in there. I'll show you that when it's done. Okay the cylinder is in just as a dry fit. Um, it's not the piston's not in or anything yet but you can see how I clearanced out the fins for the starter so now that it goes around that and it fits all the way down. Time for a progress report. We have um, the cylinder is installed with the piston inside and um, the rings came pre-gapped so you didn't have to gap them. Measured them and checked the end, end clearances and they were good. So just installed that, got the head gasket on there and now I'm just getting the head ready. This is the, the head. Um, the valves are bigger on this head than the other head and uh, this also has roller rockers and the fact that it has roller rockers means the camshaft which is here um, that can be more aggressive they can be a, um, a steeper the lobes can be steeper um, and ultimately you get higher lift um, so that's that's about it where I'm at right now just getting this head assembled and once it's all assembled with the rocker arms I will uh, install the head all right so a real quick word about these roller rockers I got them soaking in the oil now um, when you put these in you have you know your roller rocker like this then you have it comes with two different size things and so just to let you know the short one goes on the exhaust side of the head so I'm going to just put that in right now everything's together now as far as the chain timing chain goes and the sprocket and everything lined up and that was kind of a pain getting that chain on that little sprocket but um, it's on there now now the t chain tensioner goes up in the bottom and uh, just a reminder the black tip goes up obviously because that's the part that, that pushes on the tensioner inside and then um, and then the spring with the cone end goes up in there like that and then the bolt holds everything in. Another little note for you um, when you're attaching this side cover here you use their screws that they give you and they're all the same screws that hold you know this on this on they're all the same length except for one short screw the short screw goes here that's obvious but I figured I would tell you um, the other thing that's irritating is this these screws are already screwed all the way in and it wouldn't hold this cover on because of these uh, it, they're not tapped deep enough so I'm just gonna have to shorten these screws a little bit and then it'll be okay uh, not the end of the world but just kind of annoying I thought it would be fun to look at the carburetor side by side and just kind of compare them. This is the stock carburetor that comes on the ice bear and you can see the size down there through the middle 
it's kind of like an oval and then you compare that with the one that I put on was a VM22 um, also an oval kind of shape in there um, but it's quite a bit bigger if we can, can get the side-by-side -side comparison you can see how much bigger this one is and uh, I really like this carburetor I thought that did a very nice job that was a, definitely a good upgrade to the motorcycle um, but with this bigger bore kit they recommend even something bigger which is the um, VM26 and you can see it's not an oval anymore it's it's just a circle going through and we can compare that with the VM22 whoops I'm looking at the wrong side uh, yeah Th now this is a little bit different it's not a flange mount anymore it's a um, it's like you gotta use like a rubber thing but that's the the, the difference in size so a little bigger um, here's a picture of like the springs and stuff that was the stock one the VM22 and then even bigger yet now the VM26 so I just thought that'd be interesting to kind of compare them all and look at them all and uh, see the differences if you remember my video when I uh, put this thumper exhaust on uh, I had to open up this weld in here and I wasn't I was able to fit a um, 13 millimeter socket down in there um, I opened it up some more so I could get this 14 in there so now the 14 millimeter goes in there I open up the hole a lot better um, here how's that look so I opened that up a lot better um, we'll, we'll see if that helps things it, it was good with the setup I had but with this new head and everything I just thought I'd open it up a little more all right I have not tried to start this up yet so I'm gonna try to start it right now um, see what happens um, nothing's adjusted yet carburetor or anything like that so let's see <sighs> Here's a little uh, update. When I was breaking it in, it was leaking around the cam cover. So, uh, turns out this O ring that they put in the, to the cam cover, there we go, is recessed down too low. So, the O ring is not touching and it's leaking. So, what I'm going to use is the right stuff. If you ever use this stuff, it is the best, it's the best stuff you can use for any kind of sealing oil. Um, however, it bonds whatever you're sealing so tight it makes it hard to remove so um, what I did was on the back side of this this is how the cam cover sits on the bottom side I filed this to make like a chamfer so that when this bolts up against the engine if I ever need to get it off again I'll be able to get a screwdriver behind there in that little in that little chamfer and pop it off I put one here and here um, it's not anywhere where it seals so it's not going to leak but it will let you get a screwdriver behind there and pop that off i hate to make this video but uh if you notice look what happened it's a part why what happened what did i do 
this is real life folks sometimes stuff like this happens sometimes you make mistakes and I made one I made a big one uh, if you'll see earlier in the, this video in the you know in the build part you'll notice I put any C's on these studs here I don't know why I did it I was delirious it, it does no good to have it on the stud you only put any C's on the threads but I I don't know why I got happy with the brush and was putting it everywhere but while I was doing that I forgot that this isn't actually a oil passageway up this stud the, the oil comes from uh, down here at the oil pump it gets pumped out of the block it goes up through this bolt hole in the cylinder portion and then it it just follows this stud all the way up into the head lubricates the head and the oil drains back down through this hole so when I put anti seas all over this stud here um, what happened was as I was running the engine it rinsed all this anti seas off of this thing it all got back down into the crankcase and then my clutch started to slip because this is the clutch shares the engine oil the clutch shares the engine oil and there's friction discs inside of here and all because that NEC stuff got mixed in with the oil the clutch started to slip so I had to take the side of the engine off take the clutch off clean everything out and that's why I'm in the process of doing this so do not put any C's or grease or anything on these studs or you'll be taking it apart again just like this all right lesson learned All right, so the 141, here we go, up the hill again. First time I check it, it's 51 miles an hour. So 51 right there, even before the bridge. Now I hit the bridge to 55, and now we start going up the hill. at the intersection. Remember before it was at 37 at the intersection. It was struggling getting up the hill. 10 miles an hour difference. And then going up this hill here, um, we're going to be at 45 at the top. 45 and uh, it, was, I think it was 37 with the old engine. And we start heading down this hill. stayed off the throttle a little bit and uh, didn't really rev it out each gear kind of put it up this hill so the first one I check here is 45 miles an hour which I think is about what the other the 125 was I can't remember what it was at this point yeah 45 but then I quickly get with the program and get back on the throttle and um, check it there I think this next time it's well up to 57 already 57 and then 60 so we're doing 60 now it's cruising down this road and, uh, check it at the bridge again up here and it's up my uh, three to four shift up here 
the, I had to adjust the clutch uh, adjustment a little bit. Three to four shift got messed up a little bit. Already we're cooking at 57. When I hit the bridge, when we get up to here to the bridge, so now if you remember from once I get across the lake, this is a slight uphill. And that's where this thing really shines, is it keeps the speed now. Remember before when I get up here, it's 45, I was doing 45. When I get up here now, I'll still be doing 59. And that's going up up this slight hill the whole way. It's a real slight hill, but remember I was doing 45 with the other engine. Here I'm doing uh, 59. Okay, so that was uh, the whole kit and caboodle there and um, a couple of questions you might have is why did I decide to put a head and different cylinder on rather than just do like a 190 well I kind of have this thing where I like to see how far I can go with what I have so uh, of course I could have put a bigger engine in but I think it's more fun to hot rod what you have and kind of you know see how far you can push what you got I kind of look back and think like the guys that mess around with like the Ford flatheads uh, the Ford flathead V8s you know it's it's easier to put a Chevy 350 in your hot rod but it's just not as cool as getting some big power out of a flathead um, so anyway that's that's my thinking on the whole thing and um, it took a while to get that anti seize out of there to get the clutch to sl stop slipping uh, I changed the oil five times and wound up having to do an engine flush and uh, cleaned out the clutch plates and cleaned out the clutch assembly about three or four times and um, finally uh, went back to the stock clutch with the stock clutch plates and I put a 15,000 shim in there to make the clutch pack a little tighter uh, I put heavy-duty springs in there and uh, now I get no clutch slippage so as you saw from the video um, currently the speed hot, hot, top speed is 63 miles an hour uh, and that's with going downhill slightly um, in those videos where I do the before and after keep um, an eye out for the different landmarks I tried to get my speed on camera at the same landmarks so that you would be able to compare the difference between the 125 and the 141 um, I think that's about it and uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. And uh, it's been a fun project and uh, I can't believe how fast it is now. So it's a lot of fun to ride. Thanks for watching. One more thing before I go. Um, the speed, the top speed on Flatland uh, will do 60 miles an hour on the flat road. Uh, it'll get up there and no problem. And remember, I remind you of my weight and height. so. A lot of resistance there uh, with a guy 100 pounds less than me yeah he, he would who knows how fast it'll go so um, I'm kind of limited at gearing now I gotta still play with it a little bit the carburetor seems about 90% but I do want to mess around with some different jets the jets that are in the carb right now are the stock idle jet which I think is 22 and then the um, main jet is a 165 so I'm gonna try bumping it up and bumping it down and seeing the difference also I want to play around with an 18 tooth sprocket currently the bike has a 17 tooth sprocket and that 17 tooth sprocket I put on only about a week after having the bike so all along this has had the 17 uh, which is a tremendous upgrade if you're just have a stock bike and are looking for a little something extra I would put a 17 on there without thinking about it um, let me see so my speed has improved oh Going up and down hills. Going up hills is tremendously improved. Um, top speed is one thing, but it's another thing to be going up a hill and be able to hold 45 miles an hour now. So going up a hill and keeping 45 is no problem, whereas before it would struggle. You can kind of see that in the video where it dipped down to like 39 miles an hour. Um, so going up hills is great. The 
this bike likes to run anywhere between 40 and 50 miles an hour seems like the real sweet spot it likes it it's real happy in that sweet spot just to run between 40 and 50 miles an hour and um, like I said going up the hills easy and that was really what I was looking for because it's a drag if you're you know doing 30 miles an hour and traffic's backing up behind you but now it just it, this will pull up a hill now it'll actually accelerate going up the hill it's a lot of fun I kind of think uh, this is the way the factory should have did it but uh, they didn't and so it's fun to mess around with all right thanks again